This call is being recorded. Welcome everyone to the Guiding Light Ministry International Prayer and Bible Study Conference Call. This is your Sunday School Lesson Edition, and I am your host, Pastor Mark McCoy of New Harvest E-Church in Harvest, Alabama. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you for another opportunity to share your word, Lord, to fellowship with one another across this technology. We ask you, dear Heavenly Father, we, that you bless this technology and we plead the blood over it right now in the name of Jesus, over Facebook and over the conference call. We just ask you, Lord, to just have your way. We plead the blood of everyone who's listening now and will listen later to this broadcast, dear Heavenly Father. We plead the blood over their lives, their families, their, their communities, their church, their homes, their, their, their state, their country, Lord. We just plead your blood right now in the name of Jesus. We ask you, dear Heavenly Father, to just be true to your word when you say we're well, two or three are gathered in, the, in your name that you are in the midst. So I ask you this day, dear Heavenly Father, this is the Lord's day, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. And I just say to you, Lord, have your way right now. Let the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer who lives. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We praise you, Lord Jesus. We glorify you, Lord Jesus, and we just say thank you for your word. Thank you, dear Heavenly Father. For Jesus Christ, thank you, the Lord, for your Holy Spirit. Thank you for just being God and being God all by yourself. For it is in Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Our um, text for today is uh, Hebrews chapter 12, Hebrews chapter 12, Um and we're looking at uh, selected verses out of Hebrews chapter 12, starting at verse uh, 14. And we're going to read 14 and 15. And then we skip down to 18 all the way to 29. Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12. Um, and so starting at verse 14, uh, the scripture reads, uh, and this is out of a New King James Version of the Bible. Pursue peace with all people and holiness, without which no one will see the Lord. Look carefully, lest anyone fall short of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness sprinkle up, springing up, causing trouble, and by... This many become defiled. That's the verse 15. Then we skip down to verse 18. For you have come not, for you have not come to the mountain that may be touched, that burns with fire, to blackness and darkness and tempest and the sound of a trumpet, and the voice of words, so that those who hear it beg that the word should not be spoken to them anymore. For they could not endure what was commanded. And if so much as a beast touched the mountain, it shall be stoned or shot with an arrow. And so terrifying was the sight that Moses said, I am exceedingly afraid and trembling. But you have come to the Mount Zion, to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and Church of the firstborn who are registered in heaven. To God and the judge of all. To the spirit of just men made perfect. To Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant. To the blood of sprinkling which speaks better. 
things than that of Abel. See that you do not refuse him who speaks for if they did not escape who refused him, who spoke on earth, much more shall we not escape if we turn away from him who spoke from heaven, whose voice then shook the earth. But now he promises saying, yet once more I will shake not the earth, but also heaven. Now this, Yet once more, indicating the removal of things that are being shaken as of the things that are made, that the things which cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore, since we have received the kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. For our God is a consuming fire. Our God is a consuming fire. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. This, 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 this text today, we're going to be continuing our study on the covenants and, and we're looking at Jesus as being the, the mediator of a new covenant. He is the mediator of a new covenant. And this word mediator means one who settles a, a disagreement and brings people together. And Jesus is our mediator uh, between us and God. And he's bringing us together to settle all disagreements and, 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 and to, to put us at one with God. This word covenant, is, it, it, it's, it's that agreement or, or, or promise. And, and God has made promises to us. And these promises is to say that, 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 that this is what he will do and this is what he will not do. Because when you make a promise, you ought to keep it. And I, I'm here to tell you, God is a promise keeper. Oh, hallelujah. And so when, when, when Jesus mediated this new covenant with us and God, God stayed true to his promises. And we ought to stay true to our promises to him. Oh, hallelujah. So our memory verse for this lesson is verse 28 of Hebrews chapter 12. Wherefore, we received a kingdom which cannot be moved. Let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. This, this, this passage of scriptures is not... That, that that a familiar passage of scripture that many people use, but because it's in Hebrews and and the book of Hebrews is one of those books that uh, we don't really know the author. Most of us contribute the author to be uh, to be uh, uh, Paul. But but we don't really know if it's really Paul because it has a whole bunch of stuff in it. And the God, God, when he he, he inspired this writer. To write this, he was writing to the Hebrews that are in the church. Those who, who were of Jewish descent, who believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. And also for those that, that just kind of hung around on the outside. We'll get to that in a minute. You understand what I'm talking about more. And so the key concept of this, this lesson is God brought us to him. Through Jesus Christ. God did what he was supposed to do to get us to come to him. And it was through the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. My message for children here is that God has made a new covenant. A promise with his people. 
Number two, Jesus' death on the cross allows us to come to God. And number three, God's people can love and serve him without being afraid. Yes, yeah, we, we, we're going to talk about this serving. So, so the lesson facts that we're going to deal with today is to state the meaning and significance of Christ as the mediator. The biblical principle that we're going to, to explain in this lesson is how and why believers approach to God in the Old Testament era differs from the our approach, us believers in the New Testament. Our approach is different. And then our daily application is to boldly with reverence, to come boldly with reverence to the throne of grace. So that, 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 that right there brings up uh, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16. Where, where he says in that passage of scripture, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help us in a time of need. Yes, we now have access to God through, through the death and burial resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's the grace that has been given us. And we can come boldly to the throne of grace. We don't have to be afraid. We don't have to be scared. We can come to God's throne and ask him for anything that we stand in the need of. We, you know, see, let me say it to you like this as we get this lesson started. If, if, if you think back, who in history would you want to meet face to face? Now, I know many of us who are Christians will say Jesus, yeah, but we'll meet him face to face. But I'm talking about human history, him, you know, man. Some might say, well, I, I want to meet Abraham Lincoln. Some might even say, I, I, want, I want to meet Frederick Douglass. Or they go back and say, well, I, I remember the Depression. I, I want to meet. Uh, 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 Roosevelt, President Roosevelt, or I, I might even want to meet Martin Luther King and, 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 and the Civil Rights Area or Malcolm X or someone like that. They would go back and say, I just want to have a little talk with them. Well, 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 the thing is, is that you can't have a talk with those kind of people unless you have some way of accessing them some kind of way that would give you a connection with them. Because otherwise, if they saw you, they would probably just ignore you and keep on going about doing the important work that they were doing. But because of Jesus Christ, because of him, we now have access to God. And we can go and we can talk to God and we can have fellowship with God, and we can worship him in spirit and in truth. And so this lesson, this lesson is talking about Jesus as the mediator. And, and the first part of the lesson is, is God's grace, God's grace. And, 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 and let me put this thing in a little context here, because this, this section, this section from verse 12, all the way down to to, to verse 17, is dealing with renewing your spiritual vitality. It's all about being renewed in your spiritual vitality. And so I'm going to read, I, I got to read verse, verse, verse 12. And he says in verse 12, Therefore strengthen the hands which hang down in the feeble knees and make straight paths for your feet so that what is lame may be may not be dislocated, but rather be healed. And then he comes and says, pursue peace with all people. Holiness without no one willing will see, without which no one will see the Lord. Look carefully unless anyone fa uh, falls short of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness spring up, cause trouble, 
and by this many defiled. As you know, the, the, the book of uh, chapter 12 of Hebrews start off talking about running the race that has been set before us and, and talking about Jesus who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross and despised the shame. And he, he finished his course because he is the author and finisher of our faith. And he's going to help us finish the course. It goes on to talk about how, how a father ought to in, discipline his son. And God disciplines us because he loves us. And we who are being disciplined, we have to endure the chastening because it's for our good. And so that, that's, that's what this therefore in the verse 12 is talking about. Is that, that, that you got to understand there, there are going to be circumstances and situations that come to you while you're running this race called life. Sometimes it's discipline, but other times it's just circumstances and happenstances. And when they come, they, 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 you're going to be running the race of life and they come and you're going, whew, you're going to get tired. You're going to get wore out. You're going to get sick and your hands and your arms are going to just fall. And all you want to do is lay out. And God is saying, strengthen your hands. Which hang down and, and your feeble knees, which are shaking. And, 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 and make paths, straight paths with your feet. That which so that that which is already broken or lame or whatever, that it might be healed. And he says, now this is how you do it. Pursue peace with all people and holiness. Oh yeah. Don't 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 be one of those people that walk around causing confusion all the time. And then be holy because God, the God we serve is a holy God and he demands for us to be holy. So, 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 so walk circumspectly. Don't, don't be walking around with all of this mess going on. And then he says in verse 15, look carefully lest anyone fall short of the grace of God. Lest any root of bitterness spring up, causing trouble. By this, many become defiled. As I was saying earlier about the church, the Hebrew church that this writer is speaking to, there were those Jews who had truly given their lives to Christ. They had heard the word. They believe the word. They invested their faith in the word. They 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 trusted and believed in the death, bearing, resurrection of Jesus Christ, and they gave their lives to Him. But at the same time, in this Hebrew church, in this body of believers, there were those who were on the outside, kind of laying around listening, and they heard the word. But they didn't believe the word. See, 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 the reason is, is that many people want the blessings of God, but they don't want God. I'm going to say that one more time. Many people want the blessings of God, but they don't want God. They want what's in God's hand, but they don't want God's hand. Oh, hallelujah. And, and, and when and when they when they when they find out that 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 God is trying to give you grace and mercy because that's part of His hand, He wants you to get into His hand. He don't want you to just get what's in His hands. That's His grace. But but if you don't do it. Resentment builds up and bitterness builds up and it causes other people to fall short. See, 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 I, I, I could just stay here for a little while, but I got a whole lot of texts I want to run through. But I got to say this. Some of the biggest problems in church are people who just want the blessings of God, but they don't want God. 
They knew how to follow the rules and the regulations and to look holy on the outside. But on the inside, they just a bunch of mess. And God goes on in this text, and I'm not going to hit it too much because it wasn't in the printed text, talking about Esau, who sold his birthright because he wanted the blessing from God, but he didn't want God himself. So we're going to go down down there. So God's grace is there for us. That, that's what this is all about. God's grace is there for us, and we ought to receive his grace. Now we go on to, 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 to the second part of this lesson, which is dealing with the fear and reverence of God. And so when we go back and talk about God's grace, it, 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 it renews our spiritual vitality. It keeps us going. But, but, but when, we, when, when we reject him, it, it tears us apart. Now we ought to approach God in a way of reverence and fear. This, this, this section of, of scripture talks about this glorious company and, and, you know, going back, you know, we, we, we have such a cloud of witnesses starting in verse 12, I mean, chapter 12, verse one. Therefore, we also, we also, therefore we also, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and sin which so easily ensnare us. And let us run that race with endurance. Well, there's a cloud of witnesses, a glorious company that is watching us. Listen to the text as it starts off in verses 18 to 24. For, for, for you have not come to the mountain that may be touched, that burns with fire to the blackness and the, and the darkness and the tempest and the sound of trumpets and the voice of words so that those who hear it beg that the word should not be spoken unto them anymore. For they could not endure what was commanded. And, if, and even if so much as a beast touch the mountain, it shall be stoned and, and or shot with an arrow and so Terrifying was the sight that Moses said, I am exceedingly afraid and troubled. God, in, in, in this scripture, in this passage, he, he proceeds to, to, to expound upon Israel encounter with God at Mount Sinai. When Moses and Israel were traveling in the wilderness and, and they came to Mount Sinai, God wanted to speak to him. God wanted to talk to him, and 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 he made made he laid out uh, 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 dimensions. He said, "Now a uh, demands." He says, "Now look, now here's the rules. Don't y'all be coming up here touching this mountain. Y'all all get yourselves clean and and consecrated." And, and don't let nobody go up into the mountain. Don't let nobody touch the mountain. And, and when I call you, I'm going to call you and I'm going to talk to everybody. And when he started talking, his voice sounded like thunder. And it roared. And, and the people were afraid. And they begged God, don't, don't, or Moses in particular, they said, we don't want to talk to God. We just want you to talk to God. And we'll do whatever he tell you to do. They wanted a mediator between them and God. And God, even then, he wanted to talk to us directly. But when they saw his awesomeness and his might and his power and his holiness, and they knew how sharp they felt, it made them tremble. Even Moses himself. Said I, it, it, I was afraid and I trembled. But the thing about Moses, when he was afraid and trembling, by faith he continued to talk to God. By faith he continued to to go to God, and he continued to go boldly to the throne of grace, knowing that he would find mercy there, knowing that he would find grace there. 
Oh, I'm saying something to somebody. Don't run from God when you are falling short. Run to God. Don't run from God in fear, thinking that he will not hear you by faith. God is a just God. Yes, he is. But he's a merciful, gracious, and loving, kind God. Oh, hallelujah. So that was Mount Sinai. That, that's, how, that's how people dealt with God at Mount Sinai. And that's how God dealt with the people at Mount Sinai. But now, let's look at verses 22 through 24. When we deal with Mount Zion. Listen to the verses. But you have come to Mount Zion, to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, to an innumerable company of angels, and to the great assembly and church of the firstborn, who are registered in heaven, to God, the judge of all, to the spirit of just men, made perfect to 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 Jesus the mediator of the new covenant to the blood of sprinkling that speaks better than that of Abel oh hallelujah this text this text is now contrasting Mount Sinai with Mount Zion. Not, not the earthly Mount Zion where Jerusalem sits, but, but the heavenly Mount Zion where there is going to be a new Jerusalem. And, and in this heavenly Mount Zion, it's where God lives. That, that's what kingdom is all about. A kingdom is a place where the king lives and, 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 and the king rules and, and the king have followers that do what the king wants them to do. Oh, hallelujah. And this, 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 this kingdom, this new heaven and this new Jerusalem, this Mount Zion has a great assembly of angels. Too many to even count innumerable angels. And the general assembly and church of the firstborn. That, that, that's, not, that's not a different, a general assembly and the church is not different. They're one and the same. But we're all part of the firstborn. Those of us who, who have given our lives to the firstborn of our salvation, which is Jesus Christ. He is the firstborn. And now we become heirs with him when we give our faith and confess him with our heart and our mouth. That he died on the cross and God raised him from the dead. This, 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 this is the place. And God judges at this place. And he judges the spirit, it says, of just men made perfect. This is to say that 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 those who 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 were in the Old Testament era, who were men who were just because the just lived by faith, God judged them and made them perfect. But for us who live it in the New Testament era, we are made perfect. By faith also through the blood of Jesus the Christ. Yes, the just shall live by faith because we trust and believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And so it says Jesus now is the mediator of this new covenant. He's the mediator of this new covenant. 
He's the one that's getting us together. He's the one that's bridging the gap between the big gulf between us and God. Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, to the blood of sprinkling that was speak, that speaks better than that of Abel. That blood speaks better than the blood of Abel. Now, 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 you got to understand, without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. So that's why Jesus had to die, so that we would have remission of our sins. Our sins will be forgiven. But then they compare it to the blood of Abel. See, Abel, when he gave his offering, he gave his offering by faith. When, when Cain gave his offering, he just gave his offering by obligation. And so this, this, this blood of Abel, after Cain killed him, cried from the ground and cried up to God. The blood of Jesus does the same thing but better. Not only does it cry up to God, but the blood of Jesus covers us. And so when God looks down on those of us who believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, he doesn't see us alone. He sees us covered in the blood that cries out to him and says, it's done. It's finished. And into thy hands, O oh Lord, I commend my spirit. Oh, hallelujah. And so Mount Zion is so much better than Mount Sinai. Then, as they go into the next part of this lesson, and the final part, talking about Jesus as this mediator, The writer is led down this path. Listen to the path that he's led down and what it says. He says, see that you do not refuse him who speaks. For they did not escape who refused him who spoke on earth. Much more shall we not escape if we turn away from him who speaks from heaven whose voice then shook the earth. But he has promised, saying, Yet once more I will shake not the earth, but also heaven. Now this, yet once more, indicates the removal of those things that are being shaken as the things that are made, that the things which cannot be shaken will remain. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptably with reverence and, and, and godly fear. For our God is a consuming fire. This, 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 this brings us to, to hearing that the, the heavenly voice that is speaking to us and telling us to trust and believe in Jesus Christ and not only to believe in him, but to obey him because trusting and obeying God is the only way to be happy with Jesus is to trust and obey. For in the 11th chapter, it tells us that we must come to God and believing that he is a rewarder of them that, that diligently seek him. Because without faith, it is impossible to please him. So we must believe. And there are those who are around the church who hear the word of God 
and don't believe. They won't invest their faith in him. They're not trying to please him. All they want is his blessings. And so, just like he shook the mountain at Mount Sinai, and the people trembled and were afraid. He's going to shake the mountain one more time. But it ain't going to just be the mountain. He's going to shake everything. And when he shakes it, those things that are man-made, those things that are not of God, will be shaken away. But those things which remain, oh, hallelujah, they are part of the kingdom of God. Because the kingdom of God cannot be shaken. And so we who go through life where we are being shaken all the time by various circumstances and situations, we find out that we got the peace of God in us. He that is in us is greater than anything in the world. Yes, we may get shaken, but hallelujah, our faith and trust in God still remains. That's his grace for us. And then he finally says, we got to serve others. See, the same thing that we are going through now, been through in the past, there's other people going through the same thing. And we have to be there and share with them the comfort that we receive. The same comfort that we receive, we got to share it with others. Have you gotten so holy? Gotten so that, that you think that that, that, that that your relationship with God is the only relationship with God? Do you understand that your relationship with God also requires you to be his hands and his feet? To serve. This old dying world. And to serve. All of his people. Jesus told us that. People will know. I love. That we are loved. By the love. That we give to others. And trust me. If your motives are not right. If your intentions are not right, don't ever forget that God is a consuming fire. He knows. And so he'll burn off all of that mess because he is a consuming fire. So we're going to end this lesson today and go back as a review, some points to ponder. Our behavior, number one, influences others. So we should live so that we faithfully represent a holy God to others. It has been said that out of nine out of ten people will not read the Bible, but they'll read us as Christians. So we are an influence. Through the new covenant, God invites us, number two, to come near to him through Jesus Christ, our great mediator. Come boldly to that throne of grace. Number three, thank God that we can come to Jesus. For without Jesus' atoning sacrifice, there would be no new covenant. And number four, we are part of Christ's eternal kingdom, which cannot be shaken. So our job, number five, is to worship and serve God 
with the proper attitude of reverence for his holy name. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, the Father of fire and earthquakes, the Lord of light and truth, may we never forget your power. May we never forget your grace. May we serve you, O God, with holiness and reverence. We pray this. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Before I close this recording, I'd like to give those who are going to listen to this recording later and those that might be on the line right now an opportunity to give your life to Christ. We pray this prayer of salvation. Pray this prayer with me, and I promise you, if you truly believe it in your heart and confess it with your mouth, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, you will be saved. Let us pray. Dear Father God, I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that Jesus died for my sin and was buried and that you raised him from the dead. I repent of my sin. Please forgive me of my sins and come into my heart. I invite you, Jesus, to be the Lord of my life, to rule and to reign in my heart from this day forward. Please send your Holy Spirit to help me obey you and to do your will for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. If you prayed that prayer and truly believe, you are now saved. Hallelujah. For those on Facebook Live, we're going to end this broadcast on Facebook Live and go to the conference call where we will discuss this lesson a little bit more, ask questions and comments and things of that nature. So if you want to join us on the conference call, it's 910-218-0531. If you have a question or a comment, please call 910-218-0531. And so as we get ready to end this lesson, the thought I want you to remember, God's grace is there for you. Hallelujah.